David Muthoka, KTN News at Bunge Tower, Nairobi. Well, Mudoka, thanks for that update. We now shift focus to what Kenyans are talking about on the socials. I'm joined by Anne Veronica from the digital desk right here at Standard Group. Veronica, long time no see. It's great to have you with us. Long time no see. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Can't complain. Mvua tundomingi. <laughs> and let's start on that particular note because we've definitely seen the reaction from the government in terms of trying to alleviate the suffering mm -hmm. that has been caused by the flooding due to heavy downpour in the country. And something that stood out for me is that Kenyans were criticizing that this reaction was rather reactionary mm -hmm. rather than proactive despite the Met Department having given a warning, yeah? Yeah, actually, do you remember there was a time the, the Met Department gave us a warning of the El Nino yes. and uh, people started digging, uh, not even digging, building uh, gabions. The government actually started building gabions. Uh, there, were, there were so many constructions going on regarding making sure that people, that cities can manage to handle El Nino. And at that time, if, if people don't remember, I'll remind you what happened during that time. The deputy president said that people who are dying out of floods in Nijiwa na ingia kwa maji wa kiona hili maji. And he got cooked for that on Twitter, by the way. And so there are so many up, um, updates on floods right now. Mm -hmm. the Ruto, Ruto, our president Ruto has said that he has instructed the NYS National Youth Service to uh, to have a land and also rescue the people who are being affected by floods. Uh, the deputy president has said that there is going to be updates on floods. Actually, that should happen just like the way there are updates on traffic. That should happen and citizens are actually agreeing to that. And he has said that the center for floods has been reactivated. Well, let's see how that goes. Well. Now on, on the interweb, there are several things that are trending regarding the floods and one of them is Mama Victor. Um, yesterday we had a story on people who disappeared in Matare and their bodies have been found and one of them is Mama Victor. Mama Victor was an activist in Matare and that's why she's trending. People are mourning the loss. And uh, something else that is trending is Ruto's Ark. For some reasons that I, I, I can't really know why, but people are saying that the affordable housing initiative is meant to act as Ruto's Ark. That is what the netizens are saying. And um, something else that is trending, it's there was a photo of uh, the entrance of Kenya Water Institute was flooding and people are saying that charity begins at home. Whether that's a joke, but sometimes it's uh, an expensive joke. And uh, yeah, so that, those are the few things that are going on. And people are saying that it should, they are seconding the opposition leader, Ella Odinga, saying that it should be declared as, a, as an emergency because it has affected a lot of lives. According to a report, at least 60,000 people have been affected and very many people have lost their lives. And it's actually the same thing in Tanzania. They have lost 150 people due to the flood. So let's see how this goes. And we are hoping that it will get better, although the Met Department has warned that it might get worse. Well, we definitely hope Kenyans exercise caution, especially those who are domiciled in low-lying areas. Uh, it definitely is a cause of concern. We'll keep Kenyans updated on that, but let's shift focus to yet another matter that I saw trending on social media. And we've seen the EACC come out guns blazing in terms of trying to fight graft in the country. Just recently, uh, former CES and a governor have been, you know, welcome to the revolving doors at EACC to perhaps answer to queries. But this points to the bigger picture of the fight against graft especially devolved corruption. What's the latest? Well, the ESCC boss, Twalib Mbarak, uh, was, making, was talking to the press members, that was yesterday, and he was saying that people should stop associating the ESCC activities to politics. Uh, they are saying that they are not political, they are not aligned to politics. And you know, people keep on saying that, uh, according to, Twa, to Twalib, people say that when they arrest, uh, someone who is not like a big person or a known person, they are saying that I'm a tumor and then when they, they arrest a politician they are saying that they are fighting, as in they are saying that that is not the case, that they have, they do investigations for a very long time and it's not like they arrest these people based on an action that happened yesterday. So they are saying that the investigations are going on and something that came out of that press uh, conference was that he said to the governors and the lane kuibatu and he added that you can tell that lawyer come governor we will end up in his county because his county is among the people the red flags that ESC is investigating well people he never said who this governor or lawyer is but 
Orengo took the message as if it was his and people assumed actually, I think it is Orengo and people assume that it is Orengo because he he counterattacked this comment saying that they were um, reckless, irresponsible, unjustified and legally inexcusable. Well, netizens are taking they are having mixed reactions. Some are supporting Tolib while others are supporting uh, Orengo, the ones who are supporting Twalib are saying that people who commit crimes and they are found guilty should pay for the crimes, they should face the law, while others who are against, uh, who are supporting Orengo are saying that those comments made by Twalib were a bit unnecessary and uh, that they were the least expected things that an EACC boss would say. Well, let's see how this goes on and, um, well, we will wait for more updates on the story. And we definitely hope for justice we know the wheels of justice and times grind slow but they should definitely grind and most of the criticism that ESCC receives is perhaps they're not going for the big fish mm -hmm. so we hope for more action and less talk when it comes to reeling in corruption away from that let's talk about something that's a little bit interesting we well know that the tax collector in the country is the Kenya Revenue Authority yes. but Kenyans on social media have Monica, that as a sort of name, Zakayo, to uh, President William Ruto in reference to the Bible story of the tax collector. What's the latest on this? Because I saw it trending. Yeah, actually, it was trending alongside Christina Shusho. Well, the relationship between Christina Shusho and the the netizens in Kenya should be studied because how do netizens come and request you to have a whole uh, uh, concert in Kenya and you come and now you're releasing a song and it's trending in Kenya more than in your country. It sh that relationship should be studied. Well, this song that Christina Shusho released is called Zakayo. The moment she teased this song, it started trending because people, you know, people nicknamed our president Ruto Zakayo. And actually, I haven't seen him saying that that is a bad name. He's been actually saying that he'd rather be called Zakayo than see people suffer because of deaths. And um, well, now that the song is out, well, there's so many things that are going on. First of all, they wanted Christina Shusho to change the cover of the, of the song to... A photo of their own where the president is the one who's at the top and is being asked to kushuka tafadali. Uh, something else that was trending is that they are Kenyans are actually saying that we should be waiting for a cover from a Kenyan artist. You know, this Kenyan artist, how they jump onto trends. Well, let's see what they have for us are regarding that. And um, others are requesting her to do an official launch in Kenya. Well, I don't know how that goes, but will you be attending if it, that, it is done? <laughs> it's never a dull day on socials. But tell me, I didn't know she's not Kenyan. I think sometimes some people are celebrated more away from home yeah. than at home. Well, where does she hail from? Uh, Tanzania. She, she's oh. Tanzanian. Okay. And actually, she was trending sometimes. Not trending. She was a very known artist when we were young kids. I'm surprised that you don't know. No, I know her songs. <laughs> I know her songs. I just didn't know where she comes from. Because, yeah. I, I mean, there's some people who, mm. with the accent, you can pick out their Tanzanian. With Christina Shusho, I think it's a little bit difficult. But, I mean, I love her songs. We're looking forward to listening to Zakayo yeah. and see the spiritual message that is in there, apart from the just that Kenyans on social media are pointing towards. Thanks for that. That's the latest in terms of what's trending. It's always a pleasure to have you with us, Veronica. Pleasure is all mine. Thanks for your time. Okay, we'll definitely keep you updated on other developing stories that are emanating from across the country. But right now, we want to take a short break. But as we come back, remember I teased earlier on that conversation that's being held on our sister station, Spice FM, all to do with the health impasse in the country. It's been over a month. They have been on the negotiating table, but very few proceeds from the negotiations have actually been seen by Kenyans. There are various public hospitals still uh, down in terms of manpower. So that conversation on the health impasse will involve Dr. Abidan Mwachi, the national chair of KMPDU, and George Gibore, the secretary general of the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers. To stay with KTN News, it will be coming up right after this break.